Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. And hopefully not back to another video of Clocked by Susan, the copyright extravaganza. Because the last time I did I Want a Famous Face that was on MTV, the amount of copyright music that is featured throughout this, this entire episode, these entire episodes, this entire series. Today we are going to be taking it all the way back to 2004, I believe. And this one is called I Want a Famous Face, Gia, to look like Pamela Anderson. Pamela Anderson. Anderson was an absolute icon in the mid 90s to early noughties. Literally, everyone was like Pamela Anderson, Pamela Anderson glamour, Pamela Anderson, Pamela Anderson. She was on TV all the time. She was on front of magazines. She was dating rock stars. Like she was the sort of like socialite of the moment of the late 90s. So if you don't know about I Want a Famous Face, MTV basically got a documentary filmmaking crew together and documented people's individual uh, journeys to get plastic surgery to look like their favorite icons, their favorite favorite stars. We have already covered one for Elvis Presley on this channel and we are now going to be covering Pamela Anderson. So without further ado, shall we watch this? Now I'm going to give you a disclaimer. This is really old and the quality of the content is like dreadful. Basically you get eight pixels and that's about it. It is 360p and even then I would say this is probably a little bit worse than 360p if I'm honest with you. Let's pop in my ohanger. Oh yes. Serpent. And let's see about whom's to the famous face. Graphic nature of the visuals. Oh, I want a famous face. You ready? <gasps> All right. I'm just gonna feel a little pulling around the implant. Oh my God. Oh. Okay, we're almost done. So you want to look like your favorite celebrity? What was that? What was that? That was the that was the preview for this episode. What was that? The Lady Gia had her like. Uh, breast implants, like, and the doctor was, like, pulling on something in order to, like, move the implant. Oh, that's a bit scary. Well, she was awake, no doubt. Well, it used to be that people just checked out the rich and famous to see how to dress or cut their hair. But today, this infatuation with celebrity has reached a whole new level of obsession. We're talking cosmetic plastic surgery. It is obsession. In the last seven it years, is. the number of young people getting it, <gasps> over two million in 2003 alone, has almost tripled. And shockingly, many are going under the knife to resemble their favorite stars. Oh my god, this I is so graphic. I want to make myself feel like I look like Pamela Anderson. Like Gia, yes. a porn star who is crazy about Pamela Anderson. I oh no! Hair. She has like this small little itty bitty ways which I Gia, uh, an adult star that has an obsession with Pamela Anderson. All right, okay, I didn't quite expect us to be going there today, but you know what? Apparently that's what's happening. What? Gia hopes that having plastic surgery to look more like Pamela will help her go <gasps> mainstream. Listen, this is what I'm going for. Let's see what I end up with. Oh, little will doggy. cosmetic enhancement give Gia the chance to cross over and finally hit the big time? That would be an amazing achievement if I could go from porn to norm. Are the high risks of surgery worth the rewards? Adult to norm. The scalpels are sharpened, ready oh. and waiting. Find out next on MTV, I Want a Famous Face. Oh, what on earth was that? Oh my God. These titles, how bleak is this? Like... Like, and then onto the red carpet, glitter paparazzi girls, we're famous. Like, what? What is that? Right. Gia has decided on her own to get plastic surgery. MTV then asked to document her journey, girls. So MTV are not fully involved in this. They're not like, um, they're there to witness it and probably create a little bit of like drama and storyline. I don't know. All right, all right. I'm going to hold my tongue. Let's watch. Here is her story. Unexpected item in the scandal area. My name is Gia Darling and I want to look like Pamela Anderson. Gia she's darling. got long hair, big boobs. She's got that look that I want, and she's managed to make a career out of it. Pamela is stunning, though, isn't she? What? My obsession with Why did they put those two photos next to each other? This was a read by production, wasn't it? Why would they put these two photos together? That's a bit. That's a bit much. <gasps> I've got my obsession with Twenty-five. When I was like sixteen, and I saw her on like the Baywatch show. She has like this small little itty bitty waist. Oh which I my want. goodness. Pamela Anderson this is so this adult. Surgical sexiness in the booby region. It's somewhat like cartoony, a little exaggerated. I think that's very attractive. She has a great image. There's an open doors for her within the entertainment she industry. She was an icon, that's what I'm wasn't she? To get through surgery. The surgeries I want are a hair transplant. Okay. Can relate. Nose job. A nose job. Oh. Some fat transfer to my smile lines. Okay. Yes. Liposuction underneath my chin. But. 
I mean, judging from these like seven pixels we can see, the the chin there is really quite glamorously shaped. I've just had mine done with a Qualex and I'm I'm still swollen and feeling it and doing me massages, girl, so I won't see my results for another six weeks. But like, all right, Gia, okay, okay. So far, these don't sound wild. This isn't like over the top insanity so far. Larger breasts and plans. Larger breasts, okay. Liposuction to up my stomach. Oh my goodness, okay. We're starting to get a bit a bit nuts. Liposuction up my waist. Okay. And hopefully that will bring me about that much closer to looking like Pamela Anderson. Okay, so the transformation here sounds very much like if we took Pamela Anderson out of the equation and someone said to you, you know, I want a boob augmentation, I want liposuction under here, I want a nose job, I want these little lines filled in, like that it's a lot of work yes but when you take away the pamela anderson concept like that could be anyone like you could still look like yourself with having all of these things done well maybe the mo nose job is probably going to be the most dramatic like change but like the pixels on this show are so bad that i can't see what her nose actually looks like so i don't know well how are we going to compare this girls Hair transplant? No. Oh, hair transplant is going to be an amazing um, experience. In the past eight years, I've probably had around 20 surgeries. <gasps> I've had my forehead lifted. I had the brow bone shaved. I've had oh a my nose gosh. job. She this is what I'm going to be having done. I'm going to have my forehead lifted, my a brow lift, ironically, and also my um, forehead uh, like softened and shaved down. So. Gia is on her own trans journey, just like I am on my own trans journey. And it's so, it's so like interesting to hear this because this is like 20 years ago and those procedures are still there. But to hear 20 procedures in like eight years is quite a lot because like anesthetic is like a big deal. It's not just like pop and go under anesthetic, girl. It's quite a big deal. So like, mm. Bone implants, chin implants, silicone injections to my hips yeah. and silicone injections to my buttocks. Yeah, I had my eyelids lifted and healed underneath my eyes. The laser hair removal of my whole body. I had my breast done twice. I went to a C cup. After that, I went to a double D. I'm going bigger. for an E cup next. <gasps> An E cup. Oh my goodness. I could not imagine. So I'm like a B cup. The idea of going to like a C, a D, a double D, then an E. Though that is so big. That is so big. Massive silicone weights. My goodness. Okay. Okay. I feel a little bit more conflicted now. Ambivalent potentially. I'm not happy with my physical appearance and that's why I choose to have more surgery. I don't know if I'll ever be happy. Some people think I'm addicted, but I think that I'm a perfectionist. I'm also transsexual. I was born a boy. My birth name was Carlos. I just- Oh no! No, they asked you your birth name! Oh! Okay, so 20 years ago we didn't really have a lot of like the language around gender that we have now that's more common knowledge. So, so what they just did to Gia is known as dead naming. It's where they ask a birth name of a trans person. Don't do this. Don't, don't go out to your trans friends and just straight up ask them. Don't do that. When you meet a new trans person, don't say that. Don't go. Just avoid that question. Their name is their name. Their chosen name is the valid name that you should use. Okay. 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 So this is the angle we're going for. We're going for like... Young boy transsexual becomes Pamela Anderson. Anything for ratings back in the day, I guess. I seem like a girl at the age of 15. It's like a oh, little boy that I have that I'm trying to fill by transforming myself into this girl that I've always felt I was. And I think plastic surgery enables me to do that. It I've does. I've felt like a woman. And just because I don't have a vagina does not make me any less or any more of a woman. Oh, yes. Decided to so, unfortunately, they asked her about her genitals there. When trans people come up in conversation, especially on TV, quite often the genitals question comes up and they're like, have you had the op? I feel like it's very very outdated language now, but also like, unless they are in bed with you or courting you to go in bed with them, only then should that conversation really be had. I don't think that femininity is between my legs, but between my ears. I'm a wow. transsexual girl who was between born with a male body and I'm just changing that body into the female that I've always felt that was inside. Oh my, my goodness. My main source of income is producing and directing adult films, but I also model. So, uh, oh my goodness. Okay, and let's go to that. Oh, how can I say this? So, 
because trans people have been discriminated against for so long, one of the only industries that they could go into where they can make enough money to provide for the surgeries that they require in order to live a happy, fulfilling life is the adult industry. And that is still felt to this day, except now we have this phenomenon of really young people getting into the adult industry because it's fast money to help them defeat the beast that is capitalism, or at least wrangle it to something that benefits them in their lives. I 100% support the adult industries, whichever the whichever sort of branch of the adult industries you are in. I do also feel like there is the now a, there's almost like a golden ticket offered to people to start in it immediately. And this is so detrimental to the human psyche because if you do re reduce your entire life's experience, to one aspect of pleasure, this has detrimental consequences down the line. And not just because of who you are and how comfortable you are with it. Other people, unfortunately, still have an impact in our lives as part of a society and as a community. And some people are just not prepared to go that far. So I'm never, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying consider your options first, my loves. Consider your options and make sure that you are stable enough, should we say. Stable being the word. Stabliers. I do most of my work from home. Ooh, stable, pony play. Directing uh, photo shoots of myself. I'm about to blur this whole thing. I can only be in the adult industry for so long. It drains you of everything you have and you're done. It's a big... Did you hear that? You can only be in the adult industry for so long. It drains you of everything you have and then you're done. Words of wisdom, Gia. Words of wisdom. You can't really be a perfectionist when you go in for surgery because there is always going to be an element of miscommunication because you can't do your own surgery ever. So like you can never fully 100% get it exactly what you envisage in your mind because you can't do it on yourself. You're always relying on somebody else to be able to fulfill your wishes. Well, I didn't expect to be doing this today. I hope that with amazing. surgery and looking a little bit more like Pamela I would make oh, me more look at the old Google. The mainstream market. That computer. That would be an amazing achievement if I could go from porn to norm. That, that phrase, that phrase, we're not going to repeat it, but you've heard it. She hasn't really explained, like, when she says go mainstream, what that means to her. What, yeah, like, what that means. Because that can mean m multiple different things to different people. So, um, yes. My friend Alana is going to take care of me through my surgery. Do you think my breast will look like yours? <gasps> it's Alana! Yeah, I think so. Oh I my so. goodness. Oh my goodness. Alana Star. Alana Star! All oh, right, okay. So I have a little bit of personal, um, not beef. Beef is another word. Let's say, um, because I don't know if Alana even knows me, but let's just say I had an ex-boyfriend. He went and spent the night with Alana whilst he was with me, but also said that nothing happened. So, so there's a gag of the millennial coming out soon about crazy ex-boyfriends. They'll be in that one. The hardest part about being a transsexual is finding someone that can look beyond what's between your legs and concentrate on what's in your head, what's in your heart. Yes, although nowadays... I don't think Pamela Anderson would ever have a problem walking into a club and trying to pick up a guy. Yes, that's true. It's a little different for us, though. And they're all Get off. great The only straight thing here is your hair. <laughs> Oh, that's tonight, sweet. We didn't realize that it was a gay club, so there you really isn't any straight boys to play around with. Why won't gay guys do that? Because they're gay, and I don't think we look like. I don't think. Oh my gosh. Okay, so that is a question clearly asked by the camera crews, being like, why won't gay guys hit on you? Why do you think? Do you have eyes? Do you have a brain? Gay guys are interested in guys. Whatever guy that is. These are two beautiful women. Of course they're not interested. What? Ugh. Trans women are women. I don't think we look like, like men. <laughs> oh, Alana. The biggest misconception oh, is that <laughs> gay men are attracted to transsexual girls. When in reality, it's straight men who date transsexual girls because it we is. look like women. It is. Straight by guys. I think my ideal relationship. And I'll find a guy that... Oh, this music is going to get me clocked. me, the person. After oh, surgery, gee. I'm going to have a brand new look and I'm going to go flaunt it at a transsexual club. Where there are oh. straight guys to dance and hang out with.
Oh, my God, to have my surgery, oh, very exciting. You know, so, wait, 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 wait. I do find, like, so I'm quite soft to, like, the transplant, obviously. I have my own horses invested in this race. <laughs> that was an interesting analogy, but you get what I mean. But I don't know. The idea of, like, getting lots of surgery to then go and flaunt it at a club is so... It's, like, amusing, but it's also, like, slightly problematic at the same time because, like, I'm absolutely not getting surgery for someone else. I'm getting it for me. And I feel like that's sometimes something that when you have dysphoria, sometimes that message can get a bit blurred in your own mind of for why you are doing this and also for whom you are doing this for because um as I say that line can get very blurry sometimes and when you're feeling quite low and you know the things that you want to have and you have the means to get them um yeah I'm gonna leave it at that adult industry and try and find more mainstream work mainstream work but what is that like modeling Today is the day of my consultation. Beverly Hills. Talk to Dr. Mayer and Dr. Raconia about the procedures that will get Dr. Dr. Mayer and Dr. Pamela. Okay, well, she's got along. a friend with her. Great. We love the Dr. emotional Dr. support. Raconia. Unheard of on the swan. Logia. The first plastic surgeon. Hello. Okay, what can I do for you? Everything. I currently have breast implants. This would be my third breast augmentation. I'm interested in having that Pamela Anderson look. When you see photographs of Pamela Anderson, you see a lot of cleavage. We want to give you more cleavage that would give you more of that look. What we're going to do is... Wait, wait, okay. Right, there's a bosom right there. Hang on. Reopen this incision, take the implants out, and then what we're going to do is put in the new implant. And then we're going to put a drain in through your armpit to drain the fluid. With any operation, there's always the risk of hardening as well as infection, bleeding, various complications. But most people sail through this operation quite well. And I think. Okay, so he did go over the consultation, I would say, a lot better than what we've seen um, with the swan and also with bridal plasty. He explained some of the consequences. He explained some of the complications. Still not great. He kind of like glossed over them in a, in a way to be like, yeah, let me just say, sell you on the surgery. So Gia's breasts there. We saw her chest. Her chest was already quite buxom, shall we say. So the idea that like she wants to go even bigger for the third time. I mean, is there many plastic surgeons now? That would say, sure, go ahead on your third time for the biggest. Mind you, then again, we're still seeing some plastic surgery journeys happening now, aren't we? All you have to do is look through the Instagram tags. I think you'll be very happy with it, to be honest with you. Oh. Thank you so much, Doctor. Now I'm on my way to have a consultation with Dr. Mayer. Dr. Mayer only does face work and like liposuction. He doesn't do breasts. Hi, Gia. How are you doing? The second plastic surgeon girls. So since I've seen you last and we've done the forehead surgery, in the meantime, you've seen Dr. Varconi about your breast augmentation. I want you to do a couple more things I'm interested in. Tell me what you don't like. I'm not happy with this part. This part, we need to graft. Hair grafts, those are taken from the back of your head. And yes. then we put the grafts in there. Next yes. And now is so the hair grafting surgery there, I can fully, fully, fully get on board with. That is something that I have done. Most of these surgeries that you're hearing about today, I'm actually going to undergo because they will alleviate my dysphoria. I know I get a lot of comments being like, Luxaria, you look fine. You don't need surgery. I have a full face of makeup on that allows me to re-sculpt my head in videos to, to give the illusion of much more femininity that I ha than I ha naturally have. So while I, I thank you for saying that, it doesn't help my dysphoria. So for example, when I don't have lashes on, I have a hooded eye, the really deep set eyes and a very strong brow bone. So when they go, I will be infinitely happier. A massive change for me in my life was getting my hairline surgery. That infinitely increased my confidence and alleviated so many layers of my dysphoria immediately. And I don't think even now you would really be able to tell unless I told you. We just always have to remember that good work's not cheap and cheap work's not good. I don't cook it. When I do a nose like yours, I put cartilage here and here. Next is like these little lines here. Sense. They'll respond well to collagen. Next is just my liposuction of my turkey neck. Well, you have very, very little fat in here. So we just take out a little bit because we don't want to, what we call, skeletonize your neck. The next part is my stomach. And skeletonize your neck? Okay. So the doctor there basically said what I said earlier, which was that she only has a really tiny little, like, um, little amount of, of, of uh, tissue to lipo under here, shall we say. Same, similar sort of concept with me. Like, I've probably got a bit more than she has, though, let's be honest. But this is all swollen from a qualic still. It's weird because I actually have, this is the first, 
surgery video that we have watched that I can actually offer quite a lot of my own input in because I've had consultations for these things. I'm fully aware of the things that I'm going to have done and that are going to go through and that the emotions that Gia's going through and why she's getting them as well. This is really quite illuminating for me as well. I didn't know that you had cartilage put here. I wonder what shape she wants to go for then if she's going to have like a... I'm guessing it's going to be slightly pinched and upturned. I mean, almost every nose job is kind of pinched and upturned, isn't it? Um... Let's see. Wait, uh -huh. I can take out about 50% of this. Here I can take even a little bit more when you have a little bit of excess 50%. here, and especially up in here. 50% in we're life talk perception? about complications. Let's start at death, and we're gonna work our <laughs> way down. We've never had anyone die or have to go to the hospital, but you can I... always have infection, you can always have bleeding, but both of those are extremely rare. First I trust you, so I'm confident everything will be okay. See, the one thing I don't like about this is that, like, personally for me, I like to think in numbers. So, like, if someone says extremely rare, like, how rare is extremely rare to you? Is it one in a thousand? Is it one in a hundred? Is it one in fifty? Like, those are all very different numbers that might actually influence the amount that you would have. Do you know what I mean? Or who you go with? I'm, I'm still quite gagged. Fifty percent of the of the tissue on her sides can be lipoed away, and more on the front. Fifty percent. That's huge. Right? Okay. Do you think I'll look more like Pamela Anderson? Well, no one are, is going to say, oh, there goes Pamela Anderson. <laughs> no, they're going to say, Gia, look, God, she looks better than Pamela Anderson. Okay. Okay, that was an interesting thing to put in there. No one's going to think of you as Pamela Anderson as you walk past. Now, where was that energy in the last episode we watched of I Want a Famous Face for the Elvis Presley impersonator? Hmm, where was that energy? Because I feel like they indulged him in things that maybe maybe shouldn't necessarily be indulged in. But with Gia, they're being a lot more honest. And that kind of feels a bit a bit different. But I guess it's because this is a documentary of the surgery rather than the show bringing in surgeons. So I guess maybe that's the discrepancy between surgeons. <gasps> Fascinating. Oh, it's a scandal, girls. Goodness me. <gasps> $27,000! $27,000 for all that work. Okay. $27,000 20 years ago. That's quite a lot of money, isn't it, realistically? Still, even for then. I'm so excited about my surgery. I'm so excited. You are, here. But eventually, I would like to get out of it completely. I'm hoping that by having some of Pamela's attributes, it might help me have a similar career. Okay. Having a few of Pamela's attributes might help me have a similar career. But what does that mean? Like, I wish I could ask Gia, uh, like, what do you mean when you say, I want to go more mainstream? Do you know what I mean? Today is a big day. It's a day of surgery. Oh, surgery day. Oh, Very God. scary. Oh, my God. Killing me. Is oh, she going to have it all yeah. done in one go? Good morning, Gia. Oh, she's got Hi, two doctors, hasn't she? <gasps> oh, very invasive pictures, yes. Are you insert? Wait, is this happening on two separate days and they're kind of like acting like it's the same day? Because you could not have two different doctors work on you in the same day under different surgeries, could you? Like, that doesn't seem correct. So maybe they've like condensed it down and given the idea that this is all happening in the same day? I don't know. That's a bit of a choice, isn't it? <gasps> oh, it's so graphic. Oh, what is this music as well? This insane music, girls. Oh my God, it's just, oh, guitars and g gout. Oh, oh, hairline transplant. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my goodness me. It's a lot of work. Oh, and the nose at the same time. <gasps> How did, wait, 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 wait. I just realized they did her hairline transplant while she was fully under. I had mine done whilst I was awake and that was a lot. You have to like really like move into different positions and stuff. <gasps> Oh my goodness, I could not imagine having that done under anaesthetic. Like, under full full general anaesthetic. Oh, <gasps> this is a lot. Oh, lipo with needles and cutting and, and the wands and the vibrations, girl. <gasps> Collagen, eyelids, gout. Oh my goodness. Everyone that comes out of surgery on these shows always have a very specific look about them, don't they? It's very difficult to be like, oh, I want it done, when you can see, like, all the bandages and all the healing process and stuff. But, like, it, it's almost like you go into a cocoon and then you emerge a butterfly, isn't it? It's very that. And Alana... I think you look just like Pamela Anderson right now. <laughs> I think you look just like Pamela Anderson. Oh, Alana. At least she's got someone to help look after her, though. Well, that was a choice. All those moaning sounds. Gosh. Okay. Okay. This is the third day since the surgery. These third are my day. dreams. That 
Oh, she looks very glamorous. <laughs> Milk her? Oh no! Oh my god, they're like right next to each other. Yes, they're right next to each other. Oh my god, I got well that was absolutely a lot do you know what i do think though is that in a lot of like the trans experiences it is always so beneficial to have someone with you who's experienced similar things to you to go on the journey together because oh my gosh does it alleviate all of your like anxieties and things to have somebody who's like knows what's happening that you're going through with it and this is why shows like bridal plasty well less less blood bridal plasty really because bridal plasty they have the recovery room where they can see everyone but on the swan like not having friends or family around you it must be really like detrimental to your mental health it must be go see dr mayor dr mayor did a nose job hair transplant collagen to my smile lines liposuction of my chin so my much stomach and my signs wow Hi. dr mayor is this the checkup yeah. well. <gasps> oh it's take cute. things out it's cute i think i'll be really happy with it Oh wow! Next, I'm going to see Dr. Ricardi about my breast assist. Breast assist. Take my drains out. Take the drains out. Oh no! Not the drains. Take the bins out. In the bin. Okay, here's the other plastic surgeon. I'm doing great, doctors. Checking out my nose. Stephen J. So these are your drainages, and they're actually quite low. So I can take your. Oh no, this is the bit, isn't it? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Pulling drains out. Absolutely not. There it is. Pulling tubes out of patients. The ugly side of plastic surgery, girls. Oh my gosh! I am not looking forward to having any of this. Oh, scary. Up here, look at this. And you're, look at that. And you're very soft. You look really, really natural. Soft and natural? Why, why did he decide to use those words? You look really soft and natural. I'm sure Gia was not going for soft and natural. As she mentioned earlier in the documentary, she was like slightly cartoonish and ultra feminine. You need boob. <laughs> so Gia here has a little bit of a concern. I sort of missed that the first time I watched it. So I'm going to watch it again because I couldn't quite hear what she was saying. What image you have here? Look at this. And you're, look at that, and you're very soft. You look really, really nice. This one goes down the hill in a little more. Ah. Well, I mean, so she asked then when the uh, when the swelling goes down, they heal together a little bit more to give that illusion of you know like a buxom cleavage. And the doctor has not given that to her by the sound of it because he's going to go off and about soft and gentle and no uni boobs. In a year, if I'm not happy with my current boob size, I'll probably go larger. It's in a year. Five weeks since my surgery. Okay, five weeks later. I've definitely a major improvement in my face and in my body. I'm extremely happy. I had the hair transplant, a nose job, a liposuction underneath my chin, my stomach, and my waist. What is this music? Wow. Oh my goodness. Injections in my she looks lines. gorgeous. I have a little more of Pamela's features, like the <gasps> fuller. Is this a before and after? Gosh, this is like zero, zero decent comparisons. Look at these two pictures. I mean, is she giving us Pamela Anderson? Maybe not. Is she giving us bikini model? Absolutely. Breasts and a smaller waist. Now it's more like hers. I, had a I can't see the nose badly. I'm gonna have to take your word for it. I'm going to see Dr. Mayor for my post operative consultation. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Doing great. Your grass are growing very well. Let's take a look underneath your chin. Good. That looks great. Oh, can we see the nose there? You know oh, notice. the nose. Okay. So she's definitely had like that sort of what I said earlier, that kind of like, oh, whip with a little like upturn at the end. Very sweet. And you can see the collagen as well here has made quite a big difference. For me on my face when I was doing makeup like years and years and years ago. In fact, the first time I thought about getting these filled was probably about 2009. I remember just putting it off because I was a bit scared and I was like, no, no, I, don't, I can't have rest delay, no. And then as soon as I got it done in 2016, changed my life. Facial contouring, oh, stunning. My change was my smile lines here. Yes. You can lessen them, but you never can get rid of lines. Mm -hmm. That's Take true. a look and see how deep these were. You actually look fine for that. You know, I don't like unnatural looks. So That's you and I do. I, so that doctor said, I don't like unnatural looks. I feel like Gia wants that kind of like otherworldly feminine glam look. And that's, that's kind of my vibe as well. I'm kind of, I'm not on quite the same sort of like bikini model vibe, but I'm definitely on the otherworldly glam spectrum. 
So when someone says to you, I just like natural results, it's like, yes and no. I do feel like there is a fine line that you can, you can, you know, dabble in. So like, if you want that slightly supernatural supermodel look, I feel like you can veer into that. And when a surgeon says, I only like natural looks, I do kind of get a little bit like, a little thing in my mind kind of goes like, does that mean you're not going to be able to fully give me what I'm after? Or does that mean that like, your idea of beauty is different to mine. Do you know what I mean? It's one of these things where you need to consult with multiple surgeons to really get exactly what it is you want from a result. But obviously be scared of butchers. Don't go to a butcher. If if all the doctors are telling you the same thing, don't go to a back alley butcher to try and get it. Just don't. You will end up paying the price, sis. Uh, <laughs> this is just quite thin. So this is gonna go down even from this. This is good, you have no fat. It's not like you look fat. You look like you have a nice shape for a woman. Oh my god. Do you think in, in the future, if I still wanted like a smaller tip and that more turned up tip, you can still do that? We'll have to wait for the swelling to go down. Do you think I'm She's already thinking about another nose job. Oh. See, what I said earlier, this is the problem with perfectionism. You can't necessarily go into a surgeon's office and have an absolute idea of your perfection because, as I said, you aren't working on yourself. You're working with somebody else's idea of what perfection is on you for that time as well. So you do have to be stern but open-minded when it comes to consultations for surgery. It's really difficult. As I say, this whole thing is a massive grayscale, realistically. There's levels of compromise that must be made. I've achieved my Pamela Anderson goal. I think you've achieved your Gia goal, which Gia is goal. to look, let's say, more like that, but, but not exactly like that. You've j just achieved a great Gia look. Right? Okay, so that is a great. sensible Thank doctor. You. Thank you. Good. Thank Enjoy. You. Oh my gosh, that's the end. What? That just ends right there. Oh my goodness. Ah! Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I feel satiated or not, my loves. Well, my lovelies, I'm going to push my laptop away from me there and take out my oh, hanger and talk a little bit about what we have seen today because I did not expect this episode to hit me in the feels as much as it has because I'm also going through similar consultations with surgeons for facial feminization surgeries and chest surgeries. And it's just like, it's difficult when you talk about dysphoria because dysphoria is slightly different for every single trans person. Um, it's, it's one of these things where it's like, your transition is your own journey. You can only go as far as you want to go. And Gia said some absolute words of wisdom throughout this entire show of saying that like, just because I have this doesn't mean that I'm not this. Do you know what I mean? So elucidate from that sentence, whatever you would like, because I truly believe that these journeys need to be documented because it shows to people that not every trans person is the same. And it kind of leaves people with a positive example of what is capable. Because there are some trans people out here that can't have any surgeries due to underlying issues. You know, maybe they're allergic to anesthetic, all these sorts of things. Wow, what an experience that was today, my lovelies. Please let me know in the comments box below what um what you thought about this, this episode. What a weird time capsule this little episode was. I was not expecting any of this. I'm a bit speechless, my loves. Well, it is time for La Patriones. And you can see yourself scrolling past on the screen right here, my lovelies. Thank you so much for being a Patreon. Thank you so much for joining and supporting you stunning people. If you want to become a member of the Patreon and get access to outtakes and deleted scenes, get access to archived live streams, and also access to the Discord, check out the Patreon link in the description box below. Today's Twitch shout out goes to Emily Lady Emerald. Oh, thank you so much for following me over on Twitch, you stunning woman on the game. And if you want to be in with a chance of being in my next Twitch shout out, out in the next video, make sure you follow me over on Twitch. It is Luxaria Plays and I stream three nights a week, Monday, Tuesday and Thursday. Once again, I want to say a massive thank you and a huge shout out to my top tier Patreons and channel members. Erwin Fox, Stephanie Niatupski, Gay Drifloon, Erin Conkle, Magusta Lagoose, Steffi Tech, Caitlin Wright, Dana Broderick, Moldy Apple, Orko Samoji, Jared Pavlovsky, Jodia, Summer Neff, Shell Herman, Victoria Waldock, ContraPoints, Jenny Hendricks, and Min Min TM. Thank you so much for your continued support on this Chanel, you gorgeous people. You're allowing us to thrive and survive, girls. And you know what, my loves? With that, I hope Gia, wherever you are in the world, my lovely, you are having a wonderful, thriving existence, my love. And always remember that, like, lots of people have many different reasons to have plastic surgery. All you can really be is an excellent friend to them and try and be a beacon of love to your friends. And with that, my loves, I will see you in the next video.